Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to make magnetic custom dials for Frost Haven. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And a little while ago, I did a video about a viewer who asked me to prototype magnetic game dials for his new game he's launching on Kickstarter. That was a fun project, and I, I will put the link to that video here. But what I want to talk about today is how I took what I learned from that process to make some game dials for me and my family. And we are big Gloomhaven fans, and now we're in the middle of playing Frost Haven. And uh, in the past, I've made dials for Gloomhaven. This is an example of one that was 3D printed. Uh, just a comment about a Gloomhaven or Frost Haven dial is that it is a double dial. It has both health and experience on it. And uh, this, this one I did in the past was very similar to the Gloomhaven design. It had the little finger cut out here on the sides, but I really found after prototyping with the magnets here that cutouts on the top and bottom actually worked better, and so I changed the design to incorporate that. So I'm going to talk about the design process, but basically, because these are magnetic, as long as you're careful to make the polarity of the number dials all the same, and then the magnets on the, the tops, the opposite polarity, then you can mix and match any dials with any top. And that turned out to be a great thing because it allowed me to get a bunch of new materials and experiment with them, and then we could just mix and match and see what we liked the best. So just to tell you a little bit about some of the materials I'm going to be showing you, this is a laser leather, it's a faux leather, but it's really a much better leather to work with for engraving and cutting. It doesn't smell and it, it really is nice. Um, I, in fact, now what I did is I used adhesive sheets to apply that leather to my plywood before cutting and engraving. And on the, this one here, I even put it on the back of the number dial so that everything that your fingers were, were touching was that leather and that was really nice. So I enjoyed this. Um, the dials that are on the, I've currently got attached to this one. This is a, a black lam laminate that has black on the top and then a wood in the middle, a normal wood color in the middle. It was not readable enough. And as part of what testing tells you is what works and what doesn't work. And so reading, especially through these tiny windows, that did not pass that test, even though it looks, it looks kind of nice. Um, some other uh, materials I use, this is all uh, wood. Uh, one is bamboo and the other is sassafras. Those are both light colored woods and I wanted that because that makes the engraving really pop. I'm very concerned about the readability of the numbers in particular. And the, because they're all wood, the wood grain is on the back as well, so that was kind of nice. Um, I really loved these. These are laminate. Um, I got light colors. One is maple, one is birch. But they have a dark uh, wood in the middle, and once again, that really makes the engraving pop. They're um, beautiful on the back as well as the front. And uh, they're very easy to clean because they're clear coat finished, and that means you can just wipe off any of the smoke from the engraving with a damp cloth, so that's really nice. That's also true of these two uh, products. This is a laminate. It has uh, even darker wood behind it, so it really pops the engraving, and these dials are very readable but the back of these aren't as attractive, so that's a downside. And this was another favorite. Um, this is faux ebony. Uh, it's uh, just really beautiful. And then I, right now I've got it paired with the white equivalent of this black one that isn't readable. The one that has the white top is very readable, so we really liked that as a dial option. So I'm gonna talk to you about how I designed these. Um, I'm going to talk about the installation of the magnets again because that's absolutely essential. You not only have to have the polarity right, you have to have the depth right. If you have the depth right, then they turn freely, but when you stop on a number and you lay them down, they retain that number, which is really important for a dial. 
And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my thoughts about the different materials. So I'm going to talk about all that in this episode. I do my designs in Adobe Illustrator, but you can do everything you see here with Inkscape. I always do my original designs in a single document with all of the layers together that would be together in real life. I do that because I'm not just designing, I'm also testing the design. Let's look at each of the layers starting with the engraving. Each of these components are black and white clip art that has been image traced in Illustrator. That turns it into vector art that can be decomposed and changed as needed. The red cut line for the top started as a rectangle with curved corners. To do the cutouts for the fingers, I put circles on the layer above in the drawing and I used Pathfinder to say minus front and cut those little curves out. I make rectangles in the center here for the two windows that will show through to the number dials. Let's look at the magnet layer. These are circles that are deep engraved. I do them on one layer only that is shared by both the top and the number dials. This is important because that means that the alignment I see in the, the drawing here will be the same in real life. Let's turn off the top and look at the number dials. You can't just make one dial and use it twice. They're actually different because those windows are in the middle. So the numbers on one dial go the opposite direction from the others. I use the rotate function to lay these numbers out and I actually test them in the drawing because I'll turn the top back on and I'll select a dial and I'll rotate it in the drawing to make sure all the numbers show up in the window the way I expect them to. This kind of virtual testing really saves you a lot of trouble. The magnets on the top go on the back so you have to flip them over to finish the engraving. And that means that the top has to be perfectly symmetrical to fit in that space. And even though it looked like it was, it, it wasn't the first time. The first time I tried to flip it, it didn't work. So to fix that, I went back to my original profile. And I took the rectangle tool, and on the layer above this uh, dial profile, I drew this rectangle. And then I selected both the rectangle and the dial. I look at my layers and I make sure that that rectangle's really above the dial. And then I say Pathfinder minus front and it cuts that top off. Now I need to get rid of that center line. So I go to the direct selection tool and I click on that segment. And then I'm gonna delete just that line. And then I'll go back to my regular selection tool, select that whole shape and then I'm going to use my reflect tool. Now if you can't see it, it's probably because it's under your rotate tool. So get reflect and then it tells you the point it thinks you want to reflect around and it's this little um, symbol that it's going to put here in the middle. And that's not what I want it to reflect around. I want it around this center point up here. So I hold the alt key and I click on that. And then I say I want a horizontal reflection and I make a copy and it puts a new copy of it above, but now it's exactly the same as the bottom. I use the direct selection tool to pick the endpoints on each side and I join them with the join tool. So now I have one perfectly symmetrical shape. To make my cut files, I for the top I select everything of the top plus the magnet holes and I put them out on a separate drawing. And then I turn off the top, I keep the magnet holds, I turn on the number dials, and I make a copy of that. So here's what my light burn drawing looks like. It's set up to do the engraving first, then the cutting, then it's gonna stop because I'm not outputting the magnet holes yet. I, that's when I'm gonna flip over the top, and then I'll go ahead and turn off the first two turn on the engraving for the magnet holes and run that. I cut a couple test copies out of eighth inch plywood and I'm going to use these to test things like how well the magnets are working and also some color combinations. I've got the wood clamped to the bed and I'm very careful to not touch anything as I flip it and then restart it with the third step. 
We're using our wood here as a jig to make sure that that top is held in exactly the right position. And you have to make sure that you don't stop the laser cutter or, or light burn during this process. I tried various methods of making that red-blue look that comes in the original game, but I decided because you have these icons that represent health and experience, you didn't really need those colors, and I wanted a cleaner look. That's when I started experimenting with my new materials. So here I am cutting the dials alone. You don't need to stop in the middle for this because it's all three straight steps. And this is that laminate that has a white top and, and really works well for the number dials. It also cleans up very easily. This is the faux ebony. It, it's only a possible choice for the top, but it's a beautiful choice for that. It is one of the materials that a single uh, cut through worked. I had several where I had to do a second cut through um, based on the composition of the material. Now I've flipped it and you can see that it's actually light colored wood on the back. The front is clear coated, but even this side cleaned pretty easily. These were the first samples I did and even though I was disappointed with the readability of the black dials, I was so excited I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut everything that makes sense. So on my two light wood laminates, I cut both the number dials and the tops. I cut the other color of my laser leather, but with a lighter engraving. I actually went from too dark to too light, but they, they still both look nice. This requires two cuts to get all the way through. If you look to the right, you'll see that there's an adhesive sheet there with the paper still on. That's how I adhere the leather to the board. You'll see me using these sheets in my mandala videos. It's a much easier and cleaner way than glue, and if you look at the side here, you can see how beautifully it adheres. Now let's talk about magnets. When I first did this, I didn't have a way to actually measure polarity, but then I found this phone app, and that's what I'm gonna use at the beginning here. When you hold your magnet in the right place, it tells you south or north. And as long as you keep that stack of magnets I have in my left hand with the same orientation, you know that every, every magnet you peel off is gonna have the same orientation. But even then, I still check each one uh, before I apply it. I'm using super glue. Uh, that is better than the E6000 I was using on my last video. And I found the best depth to be that the magnet top is flush with the wood. That gives you that magic balance between uh, easy to turn yet stickiness. You might need to test a couple of different powers on your laser cutter to find that balance. The number dials have to be the opposite polarity from the top, and I later got this analog uh, tester. See how it's turning white on one and it flips to black on the other? The problem is that this actually is giving me the opposite names, uh, north and south, from the app. That doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. I was really making these Frost Haven dials as a birthday present for my son. So I took one of my project boxes and I put this nice bottom in it and I laid out eight different tops and eight sets of dials. It was a surprise, so I covered it, but I unveiled it at the party and all the everybody just took different parts and put them together and, and really enjoyed testing them out. It was actually hard to pick a favorite, but the one that won is the one in the middle here. The actual present is to make four of those to go with the game. But we were playing Frosthaven for the rest of the weekend, so everybody picked out their favorite dial and used that because really you just can't go back to those cardboard dials. We were spoiled at that point. So um, I have a lot of other great projects I'm working on for uh, gamers and gaming. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.